I have a message this morning I believe is from the Lord. You may say, Brother Doug, you sure are preaching along the same lines a whole lot lately. Well, as long as God leads me that way, I'm going to keep preaching that way. There's areas in our lives that we need to stop and look at many times. James chapter 4 and verse 4, you want to keep your Bibles open. James 4 and 4. Ye adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God? I'm going to read that again. Ye adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God. Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. Now don't you go out and say what Brother Doug said. You go out and say what the Word of God says. I'm going to read that last part again. Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. The Lord would touch me this morning. I want to preach on friend of world or God. Father, touch us this morning. Give me the words that are needed. Nothing more, nothing less. Let your word go forth and let it accomplish. Let it bring to pass the things that you send it forth to do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I want to ask you this morning as you're turning with me to the book of John, St. John. Chapter 15 and verse 10. I want to ask you a question this morning. Who do you love? Who is foremost in your life? Who do you turn to? Who do you trust in this morning? Who do you love? John 15 and verse 10. If you keep my commandments, you shall abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you shall abide in my love. Even as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in His love, these things have I spoken unto you, that my joy might remain in you, and that your joy might be full. This is my commandment that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love have no man than this that a man lay down his life for his friends. You are my friends if you do whatsoever I command you. Henceforth I call you not servants for the servant knoweth not what the Lord doeth. But I have called you Friends, for all things that I have heard of my Father, I have made known unto you. Are you a friend of Jesus this morning? Are you truly one of his friends? What did he say? If you keep my commandments, if you walk in my love, if you allow the joy of the Lord to be in your heart and in your life, then your joy will be full and you will be known as a friend of Jesus. I'm not talking about somebody that goes around trying to be religious and look all holy and all sanctified and they're all somebody and they have arrived. I'm talking about somebody that's got Jesus Christ down in their heart and down in their life. And regardless what the soul world throws at them, they know in whom they believe and whom they trust and they know whose hand they hold and they know Jesus will be with them through all the trials and the circumstances of life. And the love and the joy of Jesus Christ shines out in their life to this world. Verse 17. If we did nothing more this morning but read these verses in your hearing, they're very important verses this morning. These are verses that you ought to have marked in your Bible here in John and also in James. It would pay us once in a while to turn and read these verses. Listen, verse 17. These things I command you that you love one another. 
If the world hate you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. If ye were of the world, the world would love his own. But because ye are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hateth you. Did you hear what he said this morning? He says, I have chosen you out of the world. No longer to walk in the pathways and in the ways that the world would go in and that man who would be against God would walk therein. You see, I want to tell you, the world will not love Christ. He will not, the world will not love the people of Christ. If you become a Christian, don't expect the world to love you. Don't expect to have all the love of the world because they will despise you and they will hate you. Why is that? Because you have the light of Jesus Christ in your heart and your life and your light shines on their darkness, amen. And they begin to see themselves for who they are as they look at the light of Jesus Christ and condemnation comes in their heart and man does not want condemnation because when condemnation comes, it leads them to someone to wash away their sins and this world cannot and never will be able to wash away sin it can hide sin it can kind of cover sin it can make excuses for sin but it can never eradicate and do away with sin and because you have Christ Jesus in your heart and because you are a friend of God Christ forewarned us and let us know that the world would not love us. Flip back with me again now to the book of James. If you are a friend of God, the fruit of righteousness will show forth. It is one thing, as I said last Sunday, to say that I have the faith of Christ in my heart and in my life. But it is another thing to really have that faith. It is one thing to say that I am a friend of Christ and a friend of God, but it is another thing to walk in the pathways. Listen, James chapter 3, verse 17. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, and easy to be intrigued full of mercy and good fruits without partiality and without hypocrisy. And the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace of them that make peace. You see, if you have the love of Jesus Christ and you are a friend of God, the fruits of righteousness and His love will shine forth. Those things will be in your heart. Those things will be in your life. There'll not be a whole lot of drama always going on. I got quiet then, didn't it? Amen. You won't be looking for ways to disturb and cause confusion. You won't allow envy to come into your heart and strife to come into your life and upset these things. But you'll walk in His love and walk in His peace and walk in His goodness as a friend of God. The fruits of righteousness will show forth in your life. As you draw near unto God and He draws near unto you, Christ will shine forth. Man will see Jesus. And not because you're speaking it, but because you're showing it in your conversation and in your matter of life. You see, a friend of the world has confusion and is sin. And sin shows forth a friend of the world. Read on with me in James chapter 3, verse 10. Out of the same mouth proceedeth blessing and cursing. My brethren, these things ought not be so to be. Doth a fountain send forth at the same time sweet water and bitter? Can the fig tree, my brethren, bear olive berries, either a vine figs, or can so can no fountain both yield salt water and fresh? Now I want to tell you something. If you are a friend of God, your life and your actions are going to be way. Man will see Jesus in you. A fountain. He was talking about that tongue in the first part of this chapter. Oh, you was hoping I wouldn't get on that, wouldn't you? You was hoping I'd leave that alone, wouldn't you? 
Because we all have a problem with that, don't we? Man, that old tongue, a lot of times we get our mouth in gear and in motion before our mind ever kicks in. And once those words are out there, there are no pulling them back. There's no pulling them back. They're done out there and they've done, done what they've done. But a fountain does not send forth both sweet water and salt water. It can't do it. It's an impossibility. If you have Christ in your life, Christ will shine forth. You can't hold to the world with one hand and on to God with the other hand and be a friend of God. That's going to get right down where we live here in just a minute. It can't happen. It's an impossibility. For either you will love the one and despise the other or you will despise the one and love the other. People get just part of the way in. Just enough, they think. They want to get just enough of God, they think, to make it to heaven and have enough of the world to to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. But it will not work. It cannot happen. You cannot straddle the fence. Well, I know this is not popular preaching. I know they'll tell you, sign a card, shake a hand, make a profession, and and boy, heaven is yours. There's, you know, there's no life, there's no testimony, there's nothing that's got to shine forth. But I want to tell you, when you profess Jesus Christ with an honest heart and you come with true repentance, there's going to be a change in your life. All things are going to pass away. And behold, all things are going to become new again. You're going to walk different. You're going to talk different. You're going to live different. People will see Christ in your life. There's a prophet many years ago. I don't have time to get into it this morning. Numbers 22 through about Numbers 24. And you'll find his end in Numbers 31. This prophet's name was Balaam. This was a man of God. You don't believe this was a man of God? I believe this was an anointed man of God. Read the Word. He stood and he prophesied and he wanted to speak one thing. But when he wanted to speak one thing, the Holy Ghost of God came down and took over his vocal cords and he spoke blessing instead of cursing. He was called upon to go prophesy against the people of God. You better not prophesy against the people of God. You better not lay your hand on the people of God. This world's about to see that. They've kicked Christians and pushed us aside and downplayed us. But I want to tell you, I'm His this morning. I'm not ashamed to stand this morning and say that I'm a Christian and a child of God. I still believe that book from Genesis to Revelation. Every word in it, it is true, it is yea, it is everlasting. Don't tell me it'll pass away. I want to tell you that world will be standing whenever a politician and every religious leader there is is gone. That book will still stand and it'll be there. Balaam was called upon and he saw the money. I won't get into great detail, but he saw the money. He saw the fame. And he asked God if he could go and God said, No! Why don't we listen to God? If we had Jesus Christ in our heart and in our lives as we should, when God spoke, we'd listen. And he continued to pray to God and God said, Listen. If they come for you early in the morning, read it. If they come for you early in the morning, then you arise and go read it. He got up early in the morning and said, let's go. That's kind of like the way I used to do. Mom and dad, you know, mom said, well, if your daddy said so. And then I'd go to daddy and said, mom said it was all right. <laughs> Something got lost in translation there, didn't it? So he goes. God loved Balaam so much that he sent that angel to stop him. He loved him so much that he opened the mouth of a donkey. But you see, Balaam wanted the world and he wanted God. And you can't have both. You'll get to such a fix that you'll talk back to a donkey. That's what he done. Read it. If you don't believe it, read it. You'll get so involved in this world and trying to hold on to God and trying to hold on to the world that your life will be torn so apart that you'll do all kinds of crazy things. But Balaam went. And when he stood to prophesy, the Spirit of God came upon him during one of these times. 
Listen, I want you to hear these words. If you don't hear nothing else this morning, I want you to hear the prayer that Balaam brought forth as the Spirit of God was upon him. As he was speaking forth, he said, Let me live the life of the righteous and let my last end be as his. Why was that? Because Brother Mark, he had enough of God to realize that God's people would be blessed in this life and especially in the life to come. He knew that he, had, that he could face death without fear or without anxiety if he was in the hands of God. But read what his last end was in Numbers 31. Look out over the field there because Balaam wanted to hold to the world with one hand and on to God with the other hand and you cannot do it. Read what his last end is as, as they are looking over the valley and all those kings that rose up against the children of Israel are about dead and the army armies lay before them and they are dead and they are slain. The Word of God says, And Balaam also the son of Beor was there dead slain with the enemies of God. Don't stand and tell me you want to be a friend of God on Sunday morning and be on the dance hall Saturday night. Don't tell me you want to be a friend of God and come Monday you're running with the world and your mouth is shooting forth foul language and foul things and that fountain cannot send forth both. There's something wrong in the heart. Brother Doug, are you the judge? No, I know the Word. I'm, I'm no judge. I know the Word. And I want to tell you if that heart is where it needs to be with God, that mouth will bring forth the things that it should. And your actions and your attitudes will be the things that they should be. Don't think you can just be a friend of God on Sunday morning and a friend of the world the rest of the week. It will not happen. Oh yeah, you'll find somebody to pat you on the head. Sure you will. You'll find somebody to tell you everything's all right. And everything's okay. But you cannot be a friend of this world and a friend of God. Which friend are you this morning? Let me go on. 14 and 16 of James chapter 3. Listen to what he says. But if you have bitter envying and strife in your hearts, glory not and lie not against the truth. This is the book. Do you hear me? This is the book. This wisdom descendeth not from above, but is earthly, sensual, devilish. For where envy and strife is, there is confusion and every evil work. If you try to hold on to the world with one hand and try to hold on to God with the other hand, Evil works will come forth. Listen, James chapter 4. From whence come wars and fightings among you? Come they not hence even of your lust that war in your members? Ye lust and have not. Ye kill and desire to have and cannot obtain. Ye fight in war, yet ye have not because ye ask not. Ye ask and receive not because ye ask amiss that ye may consume it upon your lust. The verse I read a while ago. Ye adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God? Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. Do ye think that the Scripture saith in vain, the Spirit that dwelleth in us lusteth to envy? Can I just get straight? There's places you ought not go. There's things you ought not do. There's ways you ought not act. Brother Doug, won't you start listing them out for me? No, I don't have to. 
I don't have to. I'm not going to close line preach. I'm not going to stand here and start calling sin because you know what sin is. You don't have to call me up and ask me. You know. Come on. I'd be a liar to stand here today and tell you there is no pleasure in sin. There is pleasure in sin. There is pleasure. The world will show the advertisements and they'll show the pleasure of sin. But they fail to turn that picture and to show you that it is only for a season. It is only for a moment. And then when sin, that lust is conceived and sin is brought to pass and sin is accomplished and the pleasure is over, it brings forth death. The wages of sin is what? Death. That's an age-old law that can never be done. But I'm young, Brother Doug. The wages of sin is death. Death is working in you right now. If you're not walking in Christ Jesus, but walking in this world, death is working in you. But Doug, I'm used to hearing everything's going to be all right and hear me feel me pat on the head. Read the book. It's in the book. Lust. Lust of the flesh. He says you have not because you ask not. Parents, let me ask you something. Moms, you ever had that child to be doing something and you know it's going to get hurt if it keeps it up? The stove is there, it's red hot, and you know if they keep messing, they're going to get burnt. And you do anything you can to try to keep them from getting burnt. You, you tell them, don't play with that. Don't do that. You're going to get hurt. You tell them time and time again. You know in your heart. You wish somehow you could get it into their mind. You know the steps they are about to take. Let's come on up into teenage years. The wonderful years. You think the terrible twos was bad. And you know they're about to mess their life up, but you can't tell them. Because they're headstrong to do it. Therein we are. Therein we are. God, you know, they, they think our children, your children think a lot of times that you're just trying to run their life. How's a teenager? I'll stand over here when I say it where she can't get to me. I just think mom and dad was some of the off the wall people in the world. They didn't know nothing. The older I get, the smarter they get. And God tries to show us. He desires. He's not trying to keep you from enjoying life. He's trying to show you how to enjoy life. If you've got an instrument, something that's, that's messed up, where's the best place to go to get it fixed? The manufacturer, the one that made it, the one that created it, the one that formed it. He formed us. He made us. He knew us. Even while we were in the womb, He knew us. And desired us. And had a plan laid out for us. But we so willingly go astray from that plan. And we follow our own lusts and our own desires. And the whole time we think God is trying to run our life. No, He's trying to show you what real living is. He's trying to show you that what you need to be is a friend of God. If you want to know what life is all about. Because He said, what? Ask and you shall receive. I'm tired of it and I'm going to draw to a close. I'm tired of this world and people looking at Christians, looking down upon us, feeling sorry for us. Don't feel sorry for me. I do all the dancing I want to do. I do all the drinking I want to do. I do all the partying I want to do. 
because I have Jesus in my heart and in my life. I do not want the things of this world, but I want more of God. I want more of Him, more of His love and more of His goodness. I've learned, glory be to God, the best fountain. I've learned that the best wine is the new wine. I've learned the best dance is in the Holy Ghost of God when He comes down and the Spirit takes over. Glory be to God. And you got to move, glory, hallelujah. Friendship with Jesus Christ. I'm going to close. Verse 6. But He giveth more grace. But He giveth more grace. Wherefore He saith, God resisteth the proud, but giveth grace unto the humble. I wish I could reveal what's in my heart and mind now. I just, I don't have the words to bring forth. If our heart is in true tune with God, if our heart seeks after Him and we have Him in the forefront of our lives, we will do the right thing. We will walk in right paths. Yes, amen. We brought up in Sunday school class this morning. I'm going to hush. We brought up in Sunday school class this morning about churches busting up and different things happening. A lot of times it's not that people are so righteous and they're standing for the right. A lot of times it's self-righteousness. And if they would really seek God, God would put things where they ought to be. The fruits of righteousness, as Brother Gary comes to play for us this morning. Whose friend are you this morning? Oh, you ain't got to convince me. You ain't ain't got to prove it to me. You see, let me go just a little further here and say this. This preacher ain't going to be outside the parking lot to see where you're at. It's not my job. I ain't going to hunt you down and find out what you're doing. It's not my job. Holy Ghost is right there. He knows. You can hide it easily from this preacher because I'm not going to dig. I don't want to know. But I'm going to preach and I'm going to tell you the truth. You can take it You can walk in it and live in it or you can put it aside. But I don't want any blood on these hands. Are you a friend of God this morning? Are you a friend of Christ? Does your life show it and prove for? A dear minister, they mentioned him in Sunday class this morning. Brother Norm, I forgot that story. I reckon that happens when you get 50, about 52. Dear minister, Brother Cochran, I'll never forget. Many times he'd use this phrase and he said, We stand and we sing the song, Oh, how I love Jesus. But he said, We ought to turn it around and we ought to ask, How do I love Jesus? Father, Glory. Holy Ghost. Speak to hearts and lives just now. Lord, maybe there's that one that has had their conscience padded and eased. They think they can go in the world and yet claim Christ. Let them see there's something wrong with that picture. This morning, stir in their heart. Maybe there's one here this morning that their love for Christ is growing cold. Maybe they've turned and began to look at the things of this world. Let them see this world has nothing to offer. Renew in their heart that song, Take This Whole World. 
Just give me Jesus. Let us ask ourselves this morning. Holy Ghost, examine us this morning. How do we love Jesus? I want to